Hi, I'm Roger Montgomery from Montgomery Investment Management and welcome to this week's Video Insight. Well, our process at the Montgomery Private Fund and the Montgomery Fund is resulting in rather large balances of cash. In a rising market, this looks a little bit silly to have so much cash, but with prices expensive, I thought it might be worth digging a little bit deeper into various sectors to think about what might explain our high levels of cash and therefore the process's reticence to invest heavily in today's market. Well, when we think about the large sectors, and let's look at resources to begin with, what we see is businesses that generally don't have the most valuable competitive advantage, that is the ability to charge a higher price uh, without a detrimental impact on unit sales volume. So a company like realestate.com.au or the REA Group, uh, they can charge a higher price uh, for their services, despite the fact that there are over 80 websites in Australia offering you the opportunity to sell your house or list it for sale, and many of them offering that opportunity for free, REA can still charge more for their service without any detrimental impact on their unit sales volume. BHP on the other hand, and Rio and Fortescue are no different, have, if they charge more for their iron ore, they sell zero. That's not the sort of business that we're interested in. Despite this uh, unappealing economic of these businesses, and I note that many of them are actually discounting their iron ore in order to sell it to China right now, um, despite this dynamic, their share prices have done very, very well, particularly when you look back over the last 12 to 14 months. On the other hand, REA has done rather poorly, falling by almost 30% since July. So we don't want to invest in that sector, but it is performing well in terms of share prices. As you know, we ignore share prices. What about another sector? By the way, those economics for resource companies aren't going to change anytime soon. What about banking? Well, in the banking sector, we've got businesses that have a pressure on their net interest margin. The regulators are telling them that they have to slow down their uh, sales of loans to investors to somewhat less than 10%. So growth is arguably, credit growth is arguably going to be under pressure. And we also know that APRA is requiring or suggesting that these banks need to be absolutely rock solid in terms of their capital adequacy. And that means that of course their capital needs to go up and given a fixed amount of profit, the return on equity actually goes down. So we've got businesses that have pressure on their net interest margins, they've got pressure on their return on equity and pressure on credit growth. If the property market turns down, then that credit growth could actually turn negative. Now we're not suggesting that it will anytime soon, but we are suggesting it's something to be concerned about. We bought bank shares in the Montgomery Private Fund and the Montgomery Fund in January 2016, so more than a year ago, and we've subsequently reduced our holdings as banks' share prices have gone up. So that's two sectors, and they're probably the two sectors that most investors have a large part of their portfolio in. The other remaining sector, the probably third in line, will be the retail sector. And here we're very concerned. We're concerned for a number of reasons. One, you've got the likes of the very big retailers like the Uniqlo's of the world and the H&M's and Zara's putting pressure on margins for local retailers and we've seen many of them go bust. For example, Pumpkin Patch and uh, Rhodes and Beckett and Herringbone are examples of companies that have gone bust recently. Uh, on top of that, we also know that Amazon could be coming to Australia this year, in the third quarter or fourth quarter, or maybe next year. And that will have a big impact uh, on any retail business that focuses only on assortment and price. If it competes on assortment or price, it's going to be under pressure. Then, of course, think about the end of a construction boom. If and when that ends, and we're, also, we're already seeing approvals, commencements and completions starting to decline, that means there's going to be fewer cranes on the horizon, that means fewer construction jobs, and construction in Australia employs about 12% of the workforce, and at the same time that we've got record high debt to GDP, household debt to GDP, household debt to income, and record high credit card debt, we could have pressure on jobs and rising unemployment from an end to the construction boom. That suggests that retailers might start doing it even tougher. You've got international competition, you've got the, the potential emergence of Amazon, 
and then you've got declining retail spending as a result of an end to the construction boom. So the outlook for these three sectors is much more muted than the share prices suggest and that helps to explain why we have record high levels of cash uh, or, or very high levels of cash if not record high levels of cash in uh, the Montgomery private fund and the Montgomery fund. I'll leave you with those things to think about. Feel free to ask questions, more than happy to answer them and feel free to continue to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I look forward to seeing you again soon.